I'm Holly. And I'm Bridget. And this is Girls Next Level. (laughs) Welcome back to Girls Next Level, everybody. We're excited to be back. How was your week? It's been a crazy week. What's been going on? Well, um, a few different things. Well, we did entertainment tonight yesterday. That's why my hair is still kind of crazy today. Yeah. I feel like it's all poofed and so much hairspray in it. And we have no idea where, when it's going to air. So it might already be out by the time this airs. It might not. But it was a really fun segment called Spilling the Tea. They even gave us a little entertainment tonight teapot. Oh, spilling the E.T. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> spilling the E.T. Um, yeah, and then this is the, that juicy tracksuit that I got, the terry cloth. Yeah, if you're seeing the video on Patreon or YouTube, the blue is so vibrant. I love it. I love it. I love this color. And But I want to tell you about a funny mix-up. So I got the whole set, mm-hmm. and the pants, um, I wanted a small. And I put them on, and I was like, damn, these are really hugging my ass like I'm they fit and everything but like my ass was like really cupped in the pants okay do you feel like juicy we've talked about how they've improved some stuff on their track suits since they were out in the 2000s since they've made this comeback do you feel like they're more ass flattering than they used to be for sure because yeah. before it was just kind of like a straight uh, it yeah. didn't accentuate the ass but now they know it's all about the ass uh-huh. <laughs> but that wasn't the that wasn't the situation here um so I thought it looked good on my yeah. butt I was like wow look at that like I don't remember juicy looking this mm-hmm. good on my butt and stuff and the the hang tags hang tag said small but then I was like these just feel sort of like tight though it's weird they don't fit like my other smalls uh-huh. I take them off and the inside tag said extra small oh bummer. so they fit but they were like a little bit tight and I'd mm-hmm. actually like them to be a little bit looser yeah. so we're returning them but they're sold out oh darn so now That's I have hard. to I mean they're gonna they're gonna send me a pair when they get them back mm-hmm. in stock but so now I'm just I'm like I really want to wear it though so now I'm just wearing the top with our girls next level sweats that but color is great I'm looking I, at the monitor and I'm wearing blue as well but I look like I'm not wearing blue compared to your blue like mine looks black now <laughs> it just pops so it's nice so like I love love this color I love like a teal turquoise blue I think it's the most flattering color on everybody oh yeah Mm -hmm. I had kind of a rough night last night I won't get into it TMI but you know girls stuff yeah I just feel like I was up half the night period Bridget it's okay I I don't want to gross everybody out I mean I'm gonna be talking about some next couple episodes so oh yeah yeah Yeah, I just um yeah it was a rough night so if I look a little tired and my hair looks kind of crazy I think we're both kind of tired because I think we've mentioned here before that we lost a bunch of content and had to re-record and we're both having like really slammed weeks anyway. So we're excited to be here. We love being here. But at the same time, we're kind of on the struggle bus with like sleep. Yeah. I'm being challenged. One of my kind of informal New Year's resolutions was to schedule sleep in like it's work and make sure I get enough sleep and I'm being pushed to my limit yeah yeah well I feel like uh your other resolution is being pushed to the limit this year too yeah to not stress about stuff yeah because I had a couple things come up but yeah things are really testing you I know it's crazy we're not very far into this year I'm not sure when this will air but we're like only like uh like three weeks into January Uh right now barely and I already so I I you know break my goals down and everything Mm -hmm. and I counted it out and I have like Oh, how many do I have? I'm now I'm forgetting the exact numbers, but I have like 17 major goals. Yeah. But then I have all these tiny goals to get to those uh-huh. goals. And there's like 124. I mm-hmm. counted everything out. Um, smaller goals to get to those bigger goals. And I looked at it already. I already have seven small goals checked off and one big one checked off. That's amazing. And do you feel like starting your vision board maybe a little bit earlier last year? Because I started mine in November and I felt like by the time it was getting to the end of December, really unexpected stuff too was already in motion before the year even started. And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, one of mine was the big one that I got was already in motion and Uh kind of took place at the very end of last year. Yeah. So this year, guys, when you're making your... 2025 vision sounds so crazy to say vision board like start in November yeah I think I even started in October oh really well at least just kind of starting to make a little Mm -hmm. list not it wasn't finished or anything like that but just sort of thinking you know what this is what I I want this for next year Mm -hmm. it's too late for this year because of the holidays and everything but I'm gonna put this on and I start slowly started making that list and slowly started looking at images and stuff that represented that stuff yeah I think it's effective Yeah, and I think in like the next two weeks, I looked and it looks like I'll be able to check off like eight more small things. That's amazing. 
so yeah, they're just really small things, but still every little bit that gets you closer to that one goal. Yeah. And I know people like on our Patreon and stuff ask us to share our vision board specifically, but I feel like that's too personal. And also it puts too much pressure on because I'm already putting pressure on myself to achieve all this stuff. And I don't want other people to be like, oh, she only did a quarter of her vision board. And plus like, I know you guys are fans, but like there's always haters out there who want to like send out bad energy or maybe like block you. Yeah. So it's important to keep like speak your manifestations into existence but also kind of keep it private like protect your energy yeah yeah I responded to one of the one of the people that asked us to post it and I just said it's so personal Mm -hmm. and it's almost sort of embarrassing yeah like sometimes I don't want people coming into my house to see it because if people saw the bombasticness (laughs) of like what I'm wishing for people would be like this (laughs) <laughs> is delusional and needs to be committed. Yeah, 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 <laughs> totally. And I agree too. I feel like you do want to put it out there, but there's a fine line. You also don't want to say too much. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if jinxing it or sabotage or whatever are the right words for it, but like you don't want to do anything that like prevents it from happening too. Totally. Or get negative energy from people like, yeah, right, yeah, kind of thing, totally. you know? So yeah, that's the reason why we don't share it. And it, it's even embarrassing to me to share old ones because I do dream so big that mm-hmm. I don't even want people to be like, well, that was five years ago and she still doesn't have yeah, that totally. mansion with two pools and a, and, a, yeah. and a... No, I'm just kidding. I don't want two pools, but I'm just playing. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that kind of thing. I know what you mean. She hasn't done that world tour yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't check off all 50 states. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. Oh, but um, one other thing, back to entertainment tonight. Uh, Steven did my, um, Steven Molesky, he did our hair and makeup a lot on Girls Next Door, especially in the earlier parts mm-hmm. of it. And he did my hair and makeup for entertainment tonight. And it was first time I've seen him in so long. Yeah. And it was so exciting to like catch up. Although I did tell him to not tell me everything. Let's not talk about Girls Next Door time because we want to have him on as a guest because you guys, I think we've mentioned it before or, if, or in case we haven't, he has so many good stories so many and that pertain to this episode that we're working on right now yes because he got to come to Europe with us and he has some devastating stories to share drama mama I can't wait to hear because I think I don't even know them I don't think you do. I don't Ooh. even know that I know the half of them because he was like, it was so hard not uh-huh. to talk about things that he would like drop little things here and there. And I'd be like, shit, th- 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 don't tell yeah. me. But then I was like, wait, I didn't know that. Yeah. What? I can't wait to hear this. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to keep it fresh for you guys because it's always better when it's the first time around yeah. than trying to repeat it. Mm-hmm. But we know about repeating lately since we lost all that content. You guys, we lost 10 hours of content and we're having to like do it all over <laughs> I know but you know what maybe it's because maybe there was a reason maybe- yeah I think so I do think the content is turning out better and more complete and we keep thinking of more and more things pertaining to the topic yeah it's kind of like when questions come up and then I'm like I give you my answer at the moment but then like two weeks later I'm still thinking about the questions you guys asked and I'm like wait I have more answers to that question now I thought about it more I have like you know so much more to add yeah (laughs) well should we get back to the episode (laughs) so we land in London and it's not the swinging 60s Austin Powers scene we said we expected damn (laughs) I was so expecting that yeah not really they had me say that line and I did bring a few outfits that like were along those lines but it was never like I never like expected that to be the look I was I realized we were in the 2000s now and it wasn't going to be that yeah I think you brought up a good point when you said Kevin was the one who expected that for sure and then it shows us going to a playboy party at a nightclub and I brought our schedule and we can go over the actual schedule Mm -hmm. towards the end but I don't think it was this first night I don't think so either I think it was the next plug it in there yeah (laughs) what did you wear to this party I wore that playboy dress that I made it was like a sheer dress with a rhinestone bunny on it it was so gorgeous and I made a note in it in my notes that oh my god Holly's dress is dreamy like I I wore that to a lot of things I got a lot of wear out of that that's good though (laughs) because that takes forever to Mm -hmm. rhinestone all of that totally did you have to wear anything what did you wear underneath it to hide just like a nude thong I didn't have to wear a bra or anything because it was kind of designed to cover yeah so 
That's good. Yeah. Um, I wore a red gown. It was kind of like halter sort of with like a big slit all the way up mm-hmm. the thigh and was long. And it was it was a Playboy dress, actually. Oh, yeah. I wore a couple things. Like I think to Spain, I wear a Playboy licensing dress. They made cute dresses. They did. For real. Oh, and then, okay, so it shows me <laughs> doing these like goofy dance moves. And I just want you guys all to know that these were both Kendra and I are dancing like goofy and we're joking. Like I'm doing the sprinkler and stuff yeah. like that. Like, come on. And the guy behind us is like laughing and joining in and stuff. Yeah. And we're just being silly. So don't think like I don't have good dance moves or anything like that. But like, don't think that they're that bad. <laughs> like we're serious or something. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of, can we talk a little bit about half stance? It's in my notes. Oh, my gosh. So you guys, I'm not a good dancer either. So I'm not trying to just bag on random people's bad dancing skills. But his, the dance moves Hef would do were just so strange. And I don't really know where they came from. Wait, can I just interject and tell yes. you? People know that they're strange because I've seen people comment before, like, "What is up with Hef's dance moves? It looks like he has like maracas in his hand or something." Yeah, because like, he's doing these weird little intricate hand motions, oftentimes in front of his crotch, which maybe there's like a subliminal thing going oh on there. I'm not sure, but. I remember the very first night I went out with Hef and the girls. He was doing those dances at the club. And he's always kind of smiling when he's dancing. So I thought he was straight up joking. So I kind of pointed at his hands. I'm like, oh, like laughing. Like, oh, ha ha. Like I'm in on the joke or something. And I remember the recruiter like gave me a death glare from behind Hef. And was like making like the slicing motion across her neck. Like, stop. And I was like, oh, OK, got the, got the message. And I realized he was dead serious. But I don't know where those moves came from. I've never seen anybody else do them, except there was another, like, powerful man in the industry who was younger than Hef. But I met up with him and some other people at, incidentally, the Playboy Club in Vegas, like, a couple years after I moved out. And he was doing those exact moves. And I'm like, is he doing them because, like, Hef did them and he thinks they're cool? Or is this a thing? How weird. I know. It is so strange to me. Because I always felt they were very specific to Hef. And I felt like, I don't know where these moves came from or what Uh they represented, but something to me told me that they were very disco but like a tamed down disco like he wasn't like full on yeah you know pointing his finger yeah Yeah. in the air but they were like a version of a disco to me I don't know I think you might be right because I remember seeing footage of like when Playboy would do those ABC specials in the 70s and it would be like Playboy's disco party in the Great Hall and he's kind of doing similar dance moves so maybe it's just like left over from that and he loved disco like that was the music he always wanted played at the parties like do you remember we had a dj at the party dj crash was his name right yeah and we would often go request songs from him and he was very nice but a lot of times he wouldn't really play the songs like he knew he was supposed to play disco like they played some new stuff too but he really liked disco well i'm not hating on disco i love disco i have disco playing in my car on the way here funny (laughs) i don't mind disco either but I'm kind of surprised he didn't evolve a little bit, too, just because he always wanted to, like, rope in the young girls. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any big plans for Valentine's Day? It's right around the corner. I have the kids on Valentine's Day, so I'll probably be celebrating a couple days early. Have you ever thought about taking, like, a little bit of THC to help set the mood in the bedroom? I mean, I've always been a little bit concerned about doing that because getting that right strain and dosage can be difficult. But that's why we are so thankful for today's sponsor, Via. Via has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. We're talking about pairing aphrodisiac herbs with a mild amount of THC. Their best-selling High Love gummy will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. Via also offers a wide array of other gummies with and without THC, each with their own unique strengths and effects catered for your routines. And the best part? Via legally ships in all 50 states with discreet packaging directly to your door, no medical card required. So if you're 21 plus, check out the link to Via in our description and use code VIA Next Level to get 15% off. These gummies taste so good. Holly literally texted me and was like, damn, did you taste these new gummies? They're delicious. 
Yeah, I'm really into the blueberry midnight strain right now. It's called Zen and I take it like about an hour, hour and a half before I go to bed and I feel like it really improves my sleep and just gets me relaxed right before I need to fall asleep. And don't forget they also have zero THC products if you want them. Let the gummies work their magic. If you're 21 plus, check out the link to Via in our description and use the code VIA Next Level to receive 15% off plus a free sample. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. Yeah, so it cuts to you in an interview saying, Hef may be 80, but he still has all the right moves. <laughs> Lies. This is just more proof. These Europe episodes are just, there's so many things I'm saying in confessional that are just not true. Things they asked me to say. I'm noticing it more than ever. So then after the party, after the big party, we cut to the next morning and the energy switches the fuck up. Like it went from exciting, lively to plodding music. The skies are gray. Rainy. The energy is low. Dreary. They're in London. Speaking of rain, because it was kind (laughs) of cloudy and like sprinkling the whole time we were in London. How do you feel about rain? Oh, I love the rain. But I know you (laughs) did not love the rain. I used to hate it because I grew up in Alaska and the Pacific Northwest where it was raining all the time. So I had like some seasonal affective disorder, depression. And when I moved to California, I was so happy to be somewhere sunny. But I would still kind of react really badly. Like on our rare rainy days, I hated it. I would get so depressed. And now I'm at a point where I really appreciate it and I love it. Like I love fog. I call it Dracula weather. Like I love a cozy rainy day. I get so excited when it like downpours in LA because I just I don't know I guess it's just living here so long I know we really need the water and it's just something different but back then I still tied like cloudy weather to depression so much that it would like put me in a mood I remember (laughs) I remember you used to get in a funk when it was like rainy and dreary and I also remember and I I'm just making this connection right now right here live on our podcast (laughs) but like we used to do a lot of our field trip days on rainy days like when we would like just go to the mansion like go to like maybe a haunted location or go see like stars homes or something Mm -hmm. like that like old movie star homes not like current day ones and i bet it has something to do with your depression i bet it was like come on let's get out of the house let's go do something fun oh for sure i think you're right i never thought of it that way before though but also because we're always out doing something fun when it's cloudy and rainy i wonder if that helped switch my attitude toward it maybe like switch the association i wonder maybe because i i love the rain and i always have but i also i'm not one of those people don't get me wrong let me let me tell you both sides of this i <laughs> love being home and like just enjoying the rain at home with uh-huh. like nowhere to go and i but i also love being in my car and driving around in the rain and don't you love getting caught in the rain i do <laughs> love getting caught in the rain what i don't like about the rain if i'm going to be perfectly honest yeah. here is if i have like a million things to do or yeah. like i have to be on camera or whatever and then the rain is like mm-hmm. you know destroying your outfit or ruining yeah. your hair messing up your makeup and all that kind of stuff or you're running late because it's the rain yeah um so that's the parts I don't love but I like to go out and run errands or just like drive around a little bit because I feel like then I'm actually experiencing it yeah that's fun but I also like being cozy at home so yeah, yeah I love sure. the rain now So in this scene, we're getting ready to leave. We're in the hotel suite. I find an umbrella in the suite. I'm talking about how my favorite French word or one of my favorite French words is the word for umbrella, which is parapluie. And I'm so excited in this scene. And I can tell watching it back. And this is the first time I've really seen this in the series since we started watching it is I'm really lit up and excited about something. So Hef is pissed. But it isn't London that you're lit up and excited no, about. No, I'm just excited about like speaking French and like being on this whole trip and whatever. And I say, when we get to France, you're not even going to be able to understand me. And Hef's like, I don't understand you now. Which is kind of like a funny line, but I kind of felt like he was like grumpy. And I can always see that. It's like the scene where I'm shooting baskets in the hardwood suite in Vegas last season. And I'm having so much fun and he can't handle it that I'm lit up. Like he doesn't like that change in energy. So he has to shit on it. Yeah. And I can see that happening in this scene too it's funny because I watched the scene and I thought that was kind of a funny line from Mm -hmm. him but I totally know what you mean and it flashes to him and he doesn't look like he's being jolly either yeah and I think another part of that too is Hef and I were both pretty jet lagged at this point in the trip were you because I don't think you and Kendra are yet I think Kendra poops out later in this trip but yeah I don't feel I don't really recall being jet lagged on this trip which is crazy and maybe I just don't remember or maybe I was and maybe I just pushed through and so that's why I don't remember it 
But there's only one time where I remember feeling so dead tired and we're going to get to it soon. Mm -hmm. But um, there was, yeah, there was just that one moment where I just felt like I, can't do this I have to go to bed for a little while sure but for the most part I felt like I was raring to go and ready to get it all in let's do this yeah oh yeah and this scene too when we're sitting in the hotel room like that it just kind of like there you know how there's like really weird scenes that maybe aren't that meaningful to people probably just watching it but for some reason it just transports you back in time like Mm -hmm. when we pull up to Petco I saw the car pulling to Petco like that doesn't mean anything to the person watching but for some reason it just really brings us back Mm -hmm. but um spending time like just sitting we're just sitting on the couch like in our hotel suite we're ready and that was so much the case all the time we were always the first ones to be ready yes and we were like waiting Mm -hmm. yeah and I'm not bashing on Kendra for being late or anything because I'm not even saying she was late or necessarily but we were always so either early or punctual that even for everybody like we yeah. had to wait for the camera crews to be ready mm-hmm. and security and and Hef is still eating his breakfast right yeah. here and stuff <laughs> but we are ready and I noticed that I'm just like flipping through a magazine and it's clearly just like the magazine that was sitting on mm-hmm. the tape like coffee table yeah. in the hotel room and stuff but it just brought me back to all the time that we were like ready and just waiting and like yes. sitting there waiting and I've, it makes me wonder like how different things would be now if we had our phones yes like if we were like allowed to have phones and text and get shit done like we could have been like running a side hustle and all that time we spent (laughs) waiting totally because I feel like we could have been well obviously scrolling social media Mm -hmm. but posting we could have been doing our emails like it was just such a uh, you get all ready and then it was just like sit and wait yes pause every time but for some reason that scene and you playing with the umbrella and me like flipping through just that magazine just like really brought me back to that totally and I, later I would get a Blackberry once I started working for the studio because that was kind of like a requirement to keep in touch with like the photographers and everything and there's later in like the episode where we go to Monte Carlo I can see myself sitting in the room like on the Blackberry and that was always seen as okay because Hef knew what it was but later like like when I started texting friends and stuff, he would get pissed. And I'm not even talking about me having my head buried in my phone or anything. It would be like one text. He would get so pissed if he saw me texting. Because like, God forbid, my attention isn't completely 100% on him. I remember. I remember him getting really grumpy. Like, who are you talking to? What are yeah. you doing? <laughs> like, it's just so annoyed that you were on your phone, like at a party or something. Yeah, ridiculous. He wouldn't last today. (laughs) No, he would not. Yeah. So then cut to us getting on the bus. We are going on a tour of London, sightseeing tour. We have a tour guide named Janine. Very proper Mary Poppins type lady. She was amazing. Yes, she was an official London tour guide. And I guess to be an official London tour guide, like it's really like a lot of preparation, a lot of historical knowledge. You have to pass all these tests, know everything. So she was great. Shouldn't that be the way it is like everywhere? I feel like it should be but I don't know if everywhere has like that regulation yeah I, I'm very curious about this because I think um, one of the Q&A's you know they asked about jobs and I'm like I would love to be a tour guide yeah for sure <laughs> I would love to be a tour guide I wonder if LA has any regulations my guess is no zero. Oh, probably not well LA doesn't even give a fuck about its history they're having another hearing about the Marilyn Monroe house today and I'm like wondering how that's gonna go oh yeah so I feel like I could just could just put tour guide LA tour guide after my name and I'd be official 100% you could <laughs> slap it on the side of a truck yeah yeah well if I'm actually taking him around in a truck I might need insurance or something like that yeah but that'd be the only regulation like <laughs> yeah so we're on the bus and Janine the tour guide asks Hef if it's everyone's first time here and Hef says it is for the girls which is the only time they acknowledge that it's all of our first times and then Hef says but I've been here many times and I think the reason we spend so many days in London compared to the other days on the trip is because it was Hef's favorite city in Europe and he has memories there from like the days when they had a playboy club there in the 60s and that was like I think the most exciting playboy club and that it was the one that attracted the most celebrities Hmm. and he just has like certain memories from there and I remember him telling me once that he knew that the sexual revolution had happened when the playboy club opened because he went over there and during the trip he quote was laid by a different girl every night and I'm like okay TMI but also I guess it was just so much harder to get women in bed before then and then when that happened he was like oh damn something has changed in the zeitgeist yep 
Wow. So now we know. <laughs> now History we lesson. Know. <laughs> That's when the sexual revolution began. Uh-huh. And here's how we know. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, and then the tour guide was telling us that during the war, this area was badly bombed. And then you were talking about how you hate stuff that was built in the 60s and 70s. And the tour guide nods. But I feel like they're totally trying to make it look like that. A com- that comment kind of offended her. I think so, too. Yeah, because they're trying to cast me as like the negative of this part of the trip or like this this town's ugly and not what I thought it was going to be or something yeah but what I'm talking about are those buildings they built like in the 60s and 70s that are just plain and ugly and gross because there have been so many like beautiful buildings built throughout history and even some really interesting modern ones but like the quote-unquote like modern contemporary of that time that was just bland and boring oh I hate it too and it's all of LA a lot of it, yeah. You're <laughs> well, I shouldn't right. say all. I should yeah, not say no, all. I know There's exactly some, what you mean. But a lot of LA is built in that, just like bland, like utilitarian kind yes. of just, you know, like I don't know, like office why? building. I wonder, is it just so much ex- more expensive to build something nice? I don't know. I just got to assume that that was sort of the look back yeah. then, and they thought that was people thought it was probably like fresh and like eek. Look at this minimalistic stuff. Yeah. So this reminds me of Kevin had a story when I say I hate stuff that was built in the 60s and 70s he had later told me that what he wanted to do with this scene is after I said that he was going to show a graphic of Barbie Benton half sex girlfriend from the 60s being built which is so dumb and it's like him always trying to incorporate Barbie into every episode yeah that makes zero sense it makes zero sense and also at the time I told him but she wasn't built in the 60s and 70s she was built in the 50s she was born in the 50s. Yeah. Like, and he starts howling, laughing, because I think I think he thought I was trying to be catty and, like, age shame her. Oh, that was I like wasn't. a slam. Yeah, which I wasn't. I was just trying to say, but that doesn't even make any sense. And he's like, Whoa! <laughs> What would that graphic even look like? Would it be I like... I have a vision in my head, but it's so dumb. I feel like it looks like one of those... Um, plate things not like flash and fashion plates but kind of like where you can slide the head over and the yeah the torso over and the legs over and switch up the person or yeah. what they're wearing and stuff and how they look so weird <laughs> but I don't even know like I feel like people would look at that and be like what does that even mean yeah why is that in here I know it's so nobody would get it Mm-mm. so then one of our stops on the tour was the Sherlock Holmes store and you say in commentary that that was your favorite stop of the day well I don't know why I said that they must have asked me to say it I mean I think my real favorite stop of that day was when we went to the Globe Theater but since we weren't allowed to film oh, yeah. inside that couldn't have played into it but I wouldn't even say a Sherlock Holmes gift shop would like even clock on my radar it's just another these Europe episodes are so chock full of them just asking me to say shit and me parroting it back but I think you should tell people like why the Sherlock Holmes Museum was you know special and why we would stop there yeah well Hef loved Sherlock Holmes and a lot of times Hef and I would watch like old TV mysteries on TV a lot of times like tying it back to that but still like a random gift shop was not my favorite part of the day yeah (laughs) so random So I am a grump on this bus tour, if you can't tell. And I think part of the reason was, one, Hef and I are both jet lagged. Two, I'm picking up on his grumpy mood, and that's not helping either. But three, there was kind of this weird, and I want to know if you felt this too, this weird kind of like competitive vibe that day. And I'm just like, I'm on this trip that I've dreamed of doing my entire life to that point. And I'm just like, can't we sit back and just enjoy this? Like one of the things I did not like about the show, particularly in season two, was just kind of the competition Mm -hmm. that was lingering around the show. And I'm like, do we really have to be doing this now? Yeah. All places. So kind of like, it's that feeling of when you feel very stifled. Not that it's the worst thing to do. And like, to be fair, like we would bond a lot on this trip. And I felt like one of the things the three of us had in common is we all really wanted to get out and sightsee and make the most of our time. But this first day on the bus tour specifically, I was like, don't tell me the trip is going in this direction. And it wouldn't. It would get better. But I was just like, fuck, are we getting off on this foot? Like I had this like sense of doom kind of. I know exactly what you're talking about. It definitely was like an energy that was that felt like it was trying to suck the energy out of everybody else. Yeah. And like, I'm going to, and I don't know where it was coming from. I don't know if she was just so, so excited to be there and was like, I'm going to make the, I'm going to make the most of this. I'm going to ask every question possible. Or if it was coming from like, um, feeling your low energy and trying to like 
feed off of that. You know how some people yeah. that like a them. seesaw. Yeah. yeah, like they feel better when other people are miserable. And yeah, because that's kind of how I felt about it then. Mm-hmm. And I um and it but it did like f- even feel like it was sucking my energy too. But yeah. I was like, there's no way I'm gonna let this ruin my trip. And I think that's why they don't show me in this because yes. they're trying to show like this like. Kendra's like hyper into it and super asking a million questions and excited and stuff and you're dragging and like falling asleep and clearly miserable and like don't want to be there it seems like kind of thing but they barely show me and Mm -hmm. I think it's because my energy if was somewhere in the middle yeah like I was feeling that too from Kendra but at the same time I was I was not gonna let that bother me yes and I'm asking questions Mm -hmm. and I'm enthusiastic and I'm involved but that does not match Kevin's narrative yeah so he wants to cut that out but it was kind of getting the the trip off to kind of a bad footing yeah and luckily we turned it around thank god but that I was just like please don't tell me this is where this trip is gonna go well please don't tell me I won't be able to enjoy this this trip ebbs and flows because this is sort of like a drama not this isn't drama this is just sort of like a very competitive vibe type Mm -hmm. thing but then later there's like actual drama yes and then and but then I think in the end we all end up kind of like bonding on the trip yeah totally another thing I don't like about this scene is what in the actual fuck is my outfit (laughs) I'm so confused by it it reminds me of the outfit I wore to Vegas in season one where it's like one of those things that people were doing in the early 2000s where you're layering all kinds of shit that does not have any business being layered like I'm wearing in this scene random jeans and I'm wearing like a turquoise crystal covered bra and then I'm wearing like a country girl Laura Ingalls Wilder button up and it makes zero sense and not only does it make zero sense but I don't even know what I was going for or trying to do it's a mystery to me lots of times if I have a flop outfit on this show I at least know what I was going for or what the theme was this I'm like Wait, what was I thinking? I don't remember. Yeah. It's weird. When you when you texted me and you're like, what am I even wearing? I was thinking, oh, it probably can't be that bad. Let me look. And then I was like, yeah, I don't know how that went together. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. The only thing I can think of is that maybe you were thrown off by the rain and had to kind of like switch things up last Improvise. minute. Improvise. Like maybe I had a cute mini skirt, but... Yeah, I had to go some, with jeans instead. I something, don't know. Yeah. yeah. So then we get into this whole thing where Kendra wants to meet the queen. Then she says, but she really wants to meet Harry. And then she says, or William. But they do this graphic on the screen. Uh-huh. And she says one of them. And then they... The other one pops up on the screen and bumps the other yeah. one off. And back then, that did, that was just sort of a funny, cute scene. Uh-huh. But now I watch it back with all of the royal drama going on and stuff. And I'm like, ooh, that's kind of I harsh know. now. It's funny. It's weird because at the time, you know, it just didn't mean anything. Yeah. It's just funny and cute and everything. Like, oh, I'll just take one of them, whoever. Yeah. But now it's like, oh. It's like, oh. Oh, yeah. And then in commentary, um, Kendra says, I really want to meet Harry. And you say, I think a lot of people want to meet Harry. <laughs> True. <laughs> and then they do this funny graphic where it shows our first Playboy cover where we're in the black sheets. And then they show a graphic of the queen in bed with us. And I remember Kevin telling me this story that once they did that, he had a British woman working for him in the office office and she goes you can't do that that's the queen and he was like oh oh my god that's so funny and I think I know who in the office that would have been I think you're right yeah Uh, and she would definitely have taken offense to it Mm -hmm. (laughs) totally yeah uh Kendra says that she thinks that the queen would want to meet half I think the queen would run. (laughs) I know. I know. I don't think that the queen had any interest in meeting Hef or any of us. Yeah. But in commentary, we are speculating on whether or not that we think the queen saw this episode or not. Oh, do you think she did? I mean, my guess would be no, only because I feel like she's such a huge international figure that people are probably doing things with her name and likeness all the time. So showing her every single thing that goes on, like Hef had every single clipping of himself, whether it was from the internet or in the media, put out for him and put in a scrapbook. But I just think the queen is such like a bigger beast. Like she doesn't have time for that. Probably just to keep her sanity. They probably keep it at a very like she sees she's made to see it if it's like a big deal kind of need to know basis. I would imagine I think. 
Yeah. Yeah, I was really torn because on one hand, I think no way did she ever see that. But then knowing how much Hef gets every little clip and everything, I'm thinking, well, maybe, maybe she did. Perhaps. I think with Hef, it's more like a determination to like preserve your own legacy, whereas she doesn't really have to preserve her own legacy because she's a queen. Like historians are going to do that. That's true. And I just feel like you'd probably get to a point where she only wants to think about the corgis and the horses and you don't want to be bothered with like and then there was this on a reality show and you're stuck in bed with these hoes <laughs> implying that you're sleeping with half i know <laughs> <laughs> and they do show a graphic too of the queen in their throne and then they put a throne next nice. to it with Hef in it and, like he's the king. <laughs> DraftKings Casino is bringing you only the best. Classics like blackjack, roulette, and slots, plus exclusive games that you won't find anywhere else. I don't gamble that often, but when I do, I love playing like the video poker slots. <laughs> I just think it's so much fun and you can really get lost in it for a while. Download the DraftKings Casino app now and use code NEXT LEVEL. New players get an instant deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. That's code NEXT LEVEL only on DraftKings Casino. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. 21 plus. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. Eligibility and other restrictions apply. One per new customer. Must opt in and make minimum $5 deposit within seven days. 168 hours of registering new account. Max match $100 in casino credits, which require one-time playthrough within seven days. 168 hours. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash new player offer 2024. So Kendra keeps going about like wanting to meet the queen and stuff. And the tour guide tells us that the queen is at the Chelsea flower show. And in commentary, you're talking about how you think it's so weird that like everybody just knows the queen's schedule. Yes. Now I don't think it's that weird just because of social media. You can almost track anybody down if they're careless with how they post. But back then I thought it was so weird that you could tell which residence the queen was in based on where the flag was raised or, you know, the public just had access with like, oh, today she's doing this, today she's doing that. I thought that is so creepy and weird totally imagine that yeah yeah and then one of the things they show too are like all the um guards walking uh -huh. around the buckingham palace too and one of the scenes that they don't show and and Kendra and I were talking about this in commentary. We we're wondering why they didn't show it. But we actually went and took pictures with one of the mm -hmm. guards. And we're like posing all silly around them yeah. and stuff like that. And I think one of the reasons that they didn't post it or show it is because... I think we touched him and you're not allowed to touch him. Oh, not so like any, we're not grabbing his ass yeah. or anything like that. But I think like we were like leaning on him yeah. and like, you know, pretending to like give, blow him a kiss and like things like that. And I think, oh, I'll post the pictures. There's like, there's like two or three pictures. I'll post them on our Patreon. But I'm wondering if that's one of the reasons why they didn't show it. Cause they didn't want to get anybody in trouble. That us could be. or the guard. Yeah. Totally. But he, you guys, it's crazy. He stayed stone faced, <gasps> didn't move because they're not allowed to. They're not allowed to like smile or like talk, I guess. And he did his job totally. And Kendra's like bending over in front of him and shaking her ass. Mm -hmm. And we're like just posing. All around. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. He's like, I know. come on. He's being already. tested. He is being tested. And then um, in commentary, we're talking about how there were people dressed like that outside of um, Two Rodeo. Yeah, there was a store on Two Rodeo. I think it was called Passman or something. Was it like a jewelry store? I don't know what it was. I just yeah, remember, I remember seeing him standing there. Yeah, they had two guards dressed as Buckingham Palace guards. And people would take pictures with them and put like dollar bills in their belt as like a tip. Yeah, that's so funny. So we're back on the bus and Kendra's in the back with Mary. And then Kendra said the guards at Buckingham Palace were good looking. And Mary said the horses weren't too bad either. And <laughs> Kevin like grabs onto that and turns it into a gag. And they play, play like a neighing sound yeah, later like, on. Yeah. yeah. And Mary's a good sport. Like I'd be like pissed if somebody's like turning me into Catherine the Great all of a sudden with the horse <laughs> jokes. Wait, what do you mean? Oh, so Catherine the Great. Empress of Russia, there was a rumor about her that she had sex with a horse. <gasps> 
Have you seen her furniture? No. She had like sexual furniture with like dicks carved in it and stuff. Oh my Gotta look god! It up. Yeah. Obsessed. Well, there's a whole documentary about that kind of stuff. Wait, what do you mean horses or furniture with dicks? Wait, horses. A documentary about people have sex with horses. Yes. What? There's yes. a documentary. What is this? Yes. Where? Oh, I have to ask really quick where to find it. I don't know where it's at. How do you hear about this? I've seen it. Wait, what? Yes. Is it like a gross porn or is it just like a documentary about like what are these people doing? It's a documentary. I'm traumatized just thinking about it. I know. It is traumatizing because you think that there's no way. Ew. Hold on. Learn something new every day over here. All right, I just texted somebody who's the one that told me about it to find out like what it's called and where it's not that you guys want to see it, but just so I don't sound like a crazy person making this shit up. Yeah, not that we think you guys are waiting with bated breath to watch the... Wait, the person that sent it to... That told me about it just sent me... the. <laughs> What? Oh my God. Okay, I just had a panic moment, you guys. The person that told me about this documentary, mm-hmm. I just asked them about it again, and it's been years since I saw this, but they just sent me back question marks. And then I just panicked that I sent it to the wrong person asking oh about God. it. I just had like a whole, like one of those like moments where your stomach drops and you like get like a cold sweat out of nowhere because yes. I thought <laughs> I sent that to like the wrong person. Oh my God. He wrote, is that for me? <laughs> oh my God. I'm dying. Wait, can I see what you wrote? <laughs> I said, what? What is the horse fucking dot called? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and where can people find it? And he wrote question marks. And then he wrote, "Is that for me?" Oh my god! You well, have to continue I, I this have, condo. I have to get back to this person. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll let you guys know the next response. Oh my god, so funny. So back to the I'm show. Crying. I'm laughing so hard. <laughs> So back to the show, we are wrapping up the day and in confessional interview, I'm listing off all the things I don't like about London. I I love London. So I'm kind of struggling to find like what those things are like, okay, cloudy day. What else don't I like about London? I don't see people walking dogs. Like I'm really reaching, but I I just felt like it's one of those things where like if that's the drama they want, I'm fine with that. Like that's drama I can do. Yeah. Me acting like I hate London. Yeah. And then the next thing we do is we go to the London Eye. And I, I think have said something like, only crazy people would go up there. And then there we are Kept on it. There. Yeah. <laughs> so we're seeing all these, you know, famous landmarks from a distance. And I think there's some weird Frankenbiting here because there's conversations with us and the tour guide. Like Kendra goes, oh, is that the flower show? And she goes, no, dear, that's a truck. But it sounds kind of weird and like not right. So I think it might be the editor, Molly, who we're going to talk to later because you just spoke to her. Yeah. Well, I've been emailing with her and she definitely said that she had to do some of the lines, especially for Kendra sometimes. If we didn't say what they wanted to say or didn't say it the right way, they would have her do it. And in this case, um, and there's more than one occasion in this this particular episode that she does it for the tour guide. And this yes. could have been one of them or... Or it could have been that the tour guide said this, but not at this moment. And they kind of inserted it here. Yeah. I feel like there's a couple spots on London Eye that just don't sound right to me. Yeah. And this is another reason you, again, can't trust a goddamn thing we say on this show. Because if we won't say it and we don't say something that they can edit the way they want, they will literally call an editor in to like do an impression of whoever's not saying the thing and splice it in there. Yeah. So after the London Eye, our next stop is London Dungeons, which was your idea to go to, Bridget. So tell us what London Dungeons is and how you heard about it. London Dungeons is one of those kind of places that like you go inside and it talks about just the dark history of London. So it's like a sort of like a museum, more like a wax museum type of thing, Mm -hmm. but it's not a wax museum, but that's the best way to sort of describe it. And you go through and it will take you like through the plague and through the big fire and through like Jack the Ripper and... And like all of the dark history there was like 10 different rooms so I think that there's I think there was witch trials too there was like a whole whole bunch of different things and at one point there's even like a little ride that you get on which I thought was so cool um, and I just found it through researching when we were doing all the researching in my room and I thought "Ooh, this sounds amazing that's fun do you know if it's still there or not I don't 
Yeah, and there were more than one. Like yeah. there's a London one, there's an Edinburgh one yes. in Scotland, which is supposed to be the scariest, allegedly. I want to do that. You know what it that. reminded me of? I mean, London Dungeons was cooler, but it reminded me of that Hollywood torture museum we went to. Yeah. On Hollywood Boulevard, we went out to the Snow White Cafe one day, and then we were in this store, and then there's like a sign, like if you go down the stairs, it's a torture museum, and they have all these like mannequins and stuff, like reenacting different like medieval tortures and stuff. It's really random. People are probably thinking, these chicks are so morbid. I know. <laughs> we can't help it. Bye. I don't know why I just am intrigued by all this stuff and you know what I have a ton of video and stuff and pictures from that day we should do maybe like a little from the torture museum yeah not not from the London one but when we went in Hollywood to the torture museum yeah I meant to make a TikTok out of it and just never did so we'll have to do it now that we're talking about it yeah I think people will be interested in mm-hmm. it so then um we're in there we're in the London dungeons and it's all dark and for a while we had like a tour guide taking us through and then all of a sudden that person like just disappears and they like ditch us and that's like problematic for a couple of reasons one you can't just stop and do nothing while you're filming yeah it's like dead weight and like you you gotta pack things in while the cameras are still rolling but I think the point of it was that they were trying to make us feel scared like here we are all of a sudden the tour guide disappears and we're left alone like on the streets of London I say that in quotes because we're in like a big warehouse type Mm -hmm. thing and Jack the Ripper is around the corner and (laughs) we're like alone in here I think that was the feeling they were trying to give us but it doesn't translate on camera like I think if you're just in there just on an ordinary day on a trip it'd be fun and kind of like an escape room kind of way like or like speak no more when you get lost and nobody will help you get out but for the cameras we're just like okay what the fuck do we do now and plus Hef is impatient he gets back problems if he has to walk or stand for too long so we're like oh fuck this isn't a thing yeah so I take a we're, we're maybe abandoned for like 30 seconds before I take over and start leading the tour in a terrible British accent. Oh, and then it was crazy, you guys, because inside there, they have like real rats running around. And I don't know, like they seem to be more like tame and and like they knew, like it, this didn't seem to be an accident. Like these are yeah. like really in there. And I thought that was crazy. Like how do they control that population and how does that, how does that work? Yeah, you'd think that would be a liability. Like if somebody got bit by a rat or something. Yeah. Like I know people aren't as lawsuit happy in in other countries as they are in America but still I thought it was really fun I thought it was very interesting there's that they they only show it very briefly on the show they show us all, all putting our head in what are those things called stockade uh, things. yeah stockade yeah. thing and then it shows Hef with like an axe mm-hmm. in his hand and stuff which is kind of a cute funny picture but uh, we were there for a while and it was really fun it was so we leave and it's raining I'm talking about sharing an umbrella or something but they cut to footage from another day like I think it was kind of sprinkling when we left but they show footage of like a torrential downpour and like people under umbrellas and stuff yeah so that wasn't really where we were but we are back at the hotel now and we're all kind of cozy in bed Holly Kendra and I and we're just ordering room service and looking through the menus and kind of talking about the day and I have some thoughts on this scene yeah it's weird first of all one thing I'm annoyed by is there's this part where Kendra can't spit out the word architecture and in real life I remember just finishing the thought for her and like finishing the word for her but they don't include that part they just kind of leave it as like silent crickets and then us giggling like we're also like none of us know the word architecture and I'm like okay guys can we not (laughs) yeah well and for me this this scene is I mean it's kind of funny like don't get me wrong. I think it's funny how it plays out, but it is going back to the food shaming that they're yeah. trying to do for me because I'm like, ooh, I want to try the bangers yeah. and I can't wait for the bangers. And I'm like, and then you guys are talking about stuff and then I'm just like, I just want the bangers. <laughs> did you ever get the bangers and mash? I did. Was it good? I didn't love it. Oh. I didn't love it, but I got to try it. And that's what I was excited about because when there's like really, you know, foods that places are known for, like I want to try them yeah. and, and just have it. But I didn't I didn't love them. I don't have to have it again. Yeah. So then Kendra says, this is great because I've never seen this stuff before. And they're really pushing it that it's Kendra's first time out of the country yeah. or or in in Europe and everything. But it was all of our first times. Mm-hmm. But that's not the narrative that Kevin wanted to push. 
Yeah, I think if Kevin had his way, I would have been a million times and had seen it all and don't give a shit. You would have been once to like a beach somewhere and you're ready to go back and have fun. And Kendra was brand new. Yeah. I think that's how he would have liked it to have been. I think so too, because they really try and like brush it out that the rest of us haven't been there either. Yeah. And then in the confessionals, they're really pushing that Kendra loves London and I hated it. Yeah, (laughs) pushing that whole narrative again. In the next scene, Kendra and I decide to go do more sightseeing, but Holly and Hef are staying back at the hotel, and it says Hef has a lot of press to do. And But what was the real reasoning here? What was happening? Well, for me, I was just legitimately so motherfucking tired. Like, I would have loved to have gone to Tower of London and stuff, but... When I get tired, I feel like I'm ready to die. So I really needed, I'm like, okay, I need to pace myself. And I think probably the bus tour and feeling a little off on the bus tour and like things were getting competitive. I was like, okay, I need to go back and regroup so I can handle this situation better kind of a thing. But the footage they show of Hef and I turning down the bed, which I think they're trying to make it look like we stayed behind to fuck. But it, that was from Paris. That's the Parisian hotel, not the London hotel that we're in right now. You know what's funny? I can totally get why you think and, and maybe most people did think that's what was happening when you turned down the bed and were getting into bed, that you were staying home to have sex or whatever. But I looked at that and thought, oh, she's totally going to take a nap. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> like, you know I me. You know think, I'm a sleepy girl. <laughs> I didn't think sex at all. I was like, oh, she's taking a nap. And Hef's probably going to take a nap, yeah. too. <laughs> and around his press time. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll get to all the stuff that we did that wasn't filmed because obviously Tower of London is not filmed mm-hmm. in this. So then the next scene, we are going on a boat ride. And um, it's like Keith and his date and Stephen Molesky, our makeup artist, and Kendra and I and our tour guide. and James, um, the photographer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're on this boat and it's for high tea. We're going to have high tea on the boat and everything and just see all the sights. And our tour guide is pointing out like the House of Commons and the House of Lords. And then Kendra decides not only to flash Parliament, but also to moon them. Uh-oh. My secret for a great date is feeling confident from head to toe. That's why I'm excited to tell you about Lumi Whole Body Deodorant. You can use it on your pits, privates, and beyond. Lumi is a game-changing whole body deodorant designed by an OBGYN to work not only on your armpits, but also feet, privates, and everywhere else we get odor. No matter where you use it, Lumi is clinically proven to block odor all day long, all thanks to its one-of-a-kind pH-optimized formula. And they've got over 275,000 five-star reviews to show for it. Make the switch to Lumi, and this Valentine's will be all about head-to-toe confidence. That smells like a second date to me. Special offer. New customers get $5 off Lumi starter pack with our exclusive code. Use next level at lumideodorant.com. L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T.com. I know I've said this before, but one of my favorite things about Lumi is all the different ways that it comes, like the application ways. Like there's wipes and deodorant sticks and roll-ons and lotions. I just like that it makes it super easy to put it on when it comes in all those different forms. Plus the smells are great. Can't go wrong with smelling good. Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like a mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code next level at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code next level. So this has kind of become her go-to gag is flashing. And I feel like my go-to gag at this point in the show is bugging Hef about when are we going to get married, which will come later in the episode. What do you think your gag was at this point? Well, I don't think it's my gag, but I think the gag that Kevin's putting on me is the food. A hundred percent. Yeah. And it wasn't something I was trying to do. Like I wasn't, I wasn't being like, Ooh, food. You guys see this? I'm eating again. He would just cut everything every time I spoke about food and make it look like that's all I'm talking about. Yeah. Cause I feel like I'm a really big food enthusiast too. Like even when I'm dieting, I'm still a really big food enthusiast, but it's never really shown. So that to me shows how selective they were about what they chose. Well, and back then, and even looking back on it now, I don't think I was into the food any more than anybody else. No, I'm a fucking food bitch. 
Like, I don't remember it being a thing. Like, I'm like, when's lunch? Like, I think I'm the last person that probably was asking about that stuff. I feel like it was me. Like, I'm always the one being hypoglycemic. Like, if I don't get lunch, I'm going to fall on the floor and die. And not that there's anything wrong with, like, being into the food and stuff. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's essential to travel. Like, you have to try all mm-hmm. the foods. And you and that's so much a part of it. I'm not trying to say that. It's just I'm trying to, like, expose what's going on here because it's building. It's building towards yeah. an episode that's coming up. Yeah. To, like, shame me. And it's just another example of how selective editing is and how it can really paint a picture that people walk away from it and think it's real. They totally do. It's something that still people bring up to me today. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I just saw a comment yesterday. It was on our call her daddy thing because I, you know, did that where you can be a collaborator. So now I see every time somebody comments on that thing and somebody was like, I can't believe Bridget was like dubbed. And I put this in quotes, the fat girl on the show. Like it still like comes up. I think the good news is, though, that today people are aware of what a trick that was. And people are just more like, I I can't believe that was even a thing. Like, what were we thinking back then? Yeah. No, I agree, too. I think it's great. And I think that us talking about it and opening up about Mm -hmm. it, too, helps people realize it. Yeah, absolutely. And helps you realize how TV can mold our perceptions of something, even if it's not true. Totally. Oh, and then this one is a totally (laughs) fake line, you guys. And I got confirmation from the editor. We'll have her talk about it when she comes on the show. But they say, uh, they have the tour guide saying, if you flash the House of Parliament, you'll be thrown off the boat. But that was completely the editor doing it. Totally. And I think you can kind of hear it too. Like you can't unhear it after you realize that. Yeah. And then in commentary, we're talking about how weird it is that they didn't include the clotted cream scene because we on this boat, we do the high tea and they made us try clotted cream. And Holly speculates, well, maybe the cameras didn't catch it, Um, but they obviously did because Uh all of a sudden... Out of nowhere, the clotted cream scenes, the clotted cream scene comes on, and we were like, "What the hell?" And let me explain this. So, when we watched the episode originally, this scene is not in there. It's a different scene, and it's not even in London. The other scene is in Paris, so it all it switches to Paris right here. But in the DVDs, it doesn't, and they put the clotted cream scene in here. So, when we're doing commentary, this is the first time we're seeing the clotted cream scene. Yes, and the. Re- reason the other scene had to be taken out is because dun 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 we got sued yeah and when I say we got sued I mean everyone got sued every human and entity involved in this show got sued I got sued you got sued Kendra got sued Hef got sued Playboy, Playboy got, got sued. sued Alta Loma got sued Play Playboy's production company Prometheus Kevin's production company got sued Fox got sued E got sued everybody but Bridget for those who don't know tell people how it feels to get sued (laughs) like you just got slapped like it just feels so sickening like you don't even know like it's one of those things where your stomach drops and you just feel so like shocked and disgusted I remember finding out because we were going out somewhere after this episode aired. I was like down in the dining room waiting for everybody else because we were going out to dinner. And I wandered into the pantry where our mailboxes are to see my mail. And I got a letter with like the green registered mail tag on it. And I'm like, oh, what's this? So I open it up and it's the notice that I'm being sued. And I just remember feeling like I just got punched in the stomach. And it felt so foreign and weird to me because I always felt like lawsuits were for older, rich, powerful powerful people like at the time I was a 25 year old with nothing to my name who's living in nine o'clock curfew land I was like oh wait why, why would anybody want to sue me like wait what yeah it, it was a shock to the system yeah it's a shock to the system and I was sick about it and I was also angry mm-hmm. I know what you mean it's crazy so it turns out we were indemnified which means we couldn't be held responsible for the content in the show which we damn well should have been because as I've been saying this whole time you can't trust a word coming out of our mouths in these shows because a we're asked to say things even if we refuse to say things we can be frank invited to make it sound like we're saying things yeah and even when that doesn't work they'll have editors come in and say things for us so where this indemnification must have been because we didn't have contracts at this point with E or anybody else so it must have been through Hef like it must have been I mean somebody's contract somewhere said that everybody on the show yeah was indemnified 
which is a pretty standard thing in the industry. Like nobody was doing us a huge favor with that. That's kind of how it should have been. And it makes sense. But just to warn you guys, like I'm about to do the Tucker Carlson thing right Uh now that I hate when you don't spill the entire tea. Because obviously if we were sued once for this, we don't want to be sued again. So I'm not going to parade out here what this was. But also we tried to track down through some of the production people that we're still in contact with a copy of the original footage just so we could at least know fresh in our minds what it was. Like I'm pretty sure I know like I remember exactly what I said and how they used it but I don't remember exactly what you said I don't remember exactly what Kendra said I don't remember exactly like how it played out because it's been almost 20 years since I've seen it so it's not really worth it to kind of go over what that was like why I think the interesting part of it to even bring up is just how it feels to be like held responsible for a narrative you're not shaping it's a little tricky and I think it's interesting to point out because when we complain about being portrayed a certain way or our words being frankenbited or taken out of context I'm sure there's people at home listening who are probably like oh why do you care about that it's just a fluffy reality show nobody takes it seriously no people take it seriously yeah (laughs) I mean people think that's exactly who you are and there's certain situations where serious things can erupt from it so it does matter I think and it does matter to come out and talk about what was really going on behind the scenes just for a reason and this is just a good example of well this that. is an example and so is the fat shaming how people totally. believe what they see and stuff and how it's they can they can make a whole narrative that isn't true mm-hmm. but yeah I tried to get this scene just so we could go over it and it apparently does not exist anymore Yeah, yeah. So we can't really comment on particulars. But I do remember exactly what I said in my confessional interview because I remember when they were interviewing me, I knew they were pushing so hard for drama and I just didn't have a good feeling about it. So I said something very bland and they used it when they were just building their story. Mm -hmm. So it was part of the story. But also I know one thing I remember too since the last time we originally recorded this is I do remember one of the things that kind of set that whole thing in motion was the commercial that E! Europe made for that episode. Because the commercial, it wasn't just that this was the drama in the episode, it's that was the drama that they took and even cut and pasted even further and put in the commercial and that was being blasted all over TV in Europe. Like, this is what this episode is about and this is what happens kind of a thing. So it was even blown up bigger than just being the episode. Oh. Which is interesting. Yeah. I wish I remembered more details of it. I know vaguely what I said. I know vaguely what you and Kendra said and I know vaguely what they showed. Mm -hmm. But I don't really fully recall like exactly and that's why I really wanted to see the scene again. Yeah, totally. Just so we knew what it was. One thing I wanted to bring up, too, is when this whole situation erupted, Hef was also aghast at being sued. And, you know, according to what he was saying, was saying that he didn't think he should be sued over that for whatever reason. But then I was in Mary's office one day and I saw a letter he had drafted on his table ready to go. And I don't know if he ever sent this letter or not, but it was a letter to the person suing us saying, you know what? I agree with you. I really think the show should have shown it this other way way and I was like wait a minute record scratch Hef has final cut on every episode he sees every episode screens it with Kevin gives Kevin notes on how he wants the episode to go and what it would do if he had wanted to if he agreed with that person or wanted to stick up with that person in this process he could have easily done that but no he was all hidey ho on it until shit hits the fan and then he writes a sneaky little letter being like oh I'm on your side but but when he kind of does shit like that it kind of throws everybody else under the bus even more yeah you know what I mean because we're not in communication or weren't at that time with that person and we're not jumping in saying anything and it just kind of felt like "Eh." again I don't know if he actually sent it it might have just been a draft I saw but even that sentiment I was like fuck you it's just another example of like how two-faced he could be sometimes and how he never stuck up for us and how we would be collateral damage if it ever benefited him like you know I've talked about before how it would frustrate me so much how sometimes like girls would move out of the house and then go gossip about us or write shit about us or say shit about us in the media and he would never like comment or stick up for us or do anything right to stick up for us he's just like uh eh. 
Like he didn't care as long as everybody knew he was fucking. And I didn't even know about that yeah, at the until time now. until yeah. like now that we're recording. And I'm so insulted by that because being sued was a big fucking deal. Yeah. And we had no say on the edit of the show or what went into the show. A lot of things would be changed if it had. And he had all the say in the world. He's like, oh, I agree with you. It should have been this as if somebody else is off making the cut and approving it and doddering old Hef doesn't know what's going on. You know, give me a fucking break. Yeah. That makes me so angry yeah me too so not only that but also like it's frustrating too because it's another instance of kind of when everybody's lumped together too because I know that some people said things that were more inflammatory than other people but everybody kind of like gets slapped with the same lawsuit right. it's kind of like okay and you know I think people when they listen to this they're like oh why does that bother you Holly or why does somebody else in the group acting like this bother you and it's because we all get lumped together and right. we all kind of get the same reputation by default so like if one person's unprepared or one person's being obnoxious or one person's being rude maybe I'm wrong but I kind of always feel like everybody's looking at the three of us and being like oh those fucking playboy bitches oh we're never gonna hire them again they're not taking the time to be like, oh, it's that one girl. The other ones were really nice. Maybe some people are, maybe I'm wrong about that, but it always kind of sucks to feel like you're all kind of taking on everybody else's thing. You right. Know? Yeah, I agree. And this was not the last time the show would be sued. <laughs> we would be sued later, not us individually, but like the show would be sued later by like the dog psychic that Kendra has on in a later season. Oh, why did she sue? Because she felt like it made her like look bad or like she didn't know what she was doing or something like that. Oh. And I have no idea how that went down or how it was settled. And I think some of it goes back to not that we weren't also thrown under the bus or made to look like shit on the show. But Kevin would be really careless with like the guest stars a lot I feel like. And I always feel like people going on somebody else's show are more the ones doing the favor. I don't think Kevin saw it that way. I think Kevin thought Girls Next Door was the center of the world. And if you were on it, you were so fucking lucky. A hundred percent he thought that. He thought he was doing you the biggest oh, favor totally. by letting you be on the show. But really, and this is something I came to the conclusion of in the spinoff years, I feel like it's the person going on the show doing the favor because they're providing the show with content. Like when we were all three doing each other's spinoffs after the mansion, like you didn't ever feel like you got a big boost from going on my show or Kendra's show it's not like ooh, your stars on the rise but it gave me content or Kendra content or like if we're going on beaches like that gives you content but I didn't feel like I got like a big google search boost you, right. you know it's yeah just, it, with all three of the shows that's how I noticed it was so that's just interesting and it goes back to even like that bodybuilder Dan Decker who was on the show when Kendra did the muscle and fitness cover like they make him look stupid and vain and do a farting noise and it's just like kind of rude yeah like I don't know just an observation yeah no I get it so we're back to trying clotted cream yeah. on the boat but in real life I brought some clotted cream because full disclosure we had recorded this episode before before I lost the files or the files didn't take and we were trying to remember what clotted cream even tasted like because in commentary I'm like asking you Kendra what did it taste like and yeah. nobody's telling me but then I know I've tried it since and I'm trying to remember what it tasted like and we had full clotted cream amnesia so for those of you watching the video we're gonna take a moment don't worry I'm not gonna do my least favorite thing in a girl's next door scene and try to make a long suspenseful comedy scene out of this though I'm sure Kevin Burns wherever he is right now is looking down on us and like applauding because he loves this shit yeah yeah, but, but we're you, gonna try some clotted cream and tell you what it tastes like. You guys wait though; it's so cute. She's got <laughs> like scones and clotted cream and honey and like berries and these cute little like tea plates. The plates are from the Georges Saint Hotel, I think, <gasps> which is the hotel we'll be in at Paris. And they're so cute. Thanks. It's like the room service china. Yeah. I so, didn't steal it. I legitimately bought it. Should but. we talk about the scene? Like just to kind of say how the scene went down really quick and then do it? Yeah. Why don't you tell it while I prepare a little scone for each okay, of us? Okay. Sounds good. All right. So um, we're on the boat. We're doing the high tea. They bring out all these platters of goodies. And I'm kind of like naming off all the yummy things I see on there. But then our tour guide, Janine, kept raving about the clotted cream. And then so she pulls out a scone and cuts it in half and she puts on this heaping like I love trying new things and stuff like this but this was a heaping pile of clotted cream and I'm not even sure I'm gonna like it so much and then she tops it with like a little bit of jam and then I taste it and the suspense is on is she gonna like it or not and I say 
oh, it's not bad. And everybody laughs, ha, ha, ha. And then they try and make Kendra taste it. And they also put a heaping load of, of it on hers. And she's like kind of spitting up and it's like stringing out of her mouth it's so gross and she's like grossing out about it and then like holly said in commentary she keeps asking us thank you she keeps asking us like well what did it taste like what did it taste like and then and we don't answer her because honestly like i didn't even really remember what it tasted like and i had an idea of what i thought it tasted like but i couldn't quite remember and then like you said you tried it too and then couldn't remember what it tasted like after so it must not be too bad or good yeah so we're but here we're let's try, try it, it and tell you what it is you know what it reminds me of if you guys ever get like strauss creamery whole milk and you know how the when the cream rises to the top of the milk i know most milk sold isn't like that but it just tastes like regular cream to me oh yeah i just tasted it just the cream itself because i want to just know it almost tastes like butter unsalted butter Mm-hmm. a little bit lighter not really buttery it does have that texture for sure. But let me try it with the scone. Good thing it's a cheat day. I'm eating this whole thing. All right, here we go. <laughs> I really like this. I'm going to keep it in my fridge and finish it eventually. I don't hate it. But I think at the time also, I didn't know what to expect. And I think I thought it should be sweet because it's mm -hmm. when I think cream, I think sweet. And then when it wasn't, and then also in the scene, she puts jam on it. And I'm not a big jam fan. So we should talk a little bit since we're on the topic of food of like what else we ate in London and like the cliche of London supposedly having bad food. I remember we ate a lot of like American type places when we were there. Like we ate at Nobu for one of our meals. We got McDonald's at one point, you know, stuff like that. But I've talked to other friends who are pretty well traveled and stuff and they feel and I kind of agree with this too, that the food in London got a lot better maybe like 10, 15 years ago, like right after we went on this trip. Mm. Like by the time we went on this trip, it was still sketch. And I'm not trying to slam on London because I'm sure you guys come over here and you're like, this disgusting, salt-filled American food's fucking gross. Like they probably think it's gross too. But from an American standpoint, there was always this reputation of like London having awful food. But I don't think even, you know, for an American palate, I don't even think that's true anymore. Oh, I don't think so. I've been back since and had amazing food yeah, in London. Yeah, absolutely. Like really good restaurants. You guys know my favorite game is June's Journey. You can play it on your phone anywhere you are. It's so relaxing yet intriguing and just challenging enough. It involves the main character, June Parker. She is out to solve a mystery. And you guys know I love mysteries. Also, it's set in the glamorous culture of the 1920s, which I also love. You know what else I love? Decor. And you can also explore and build your own vivid scenarios. You can build your own island estate. It's so amazing. I love it. When I get tired of scrolling social media and seeing stressful comments and things like that, I love to relax and enjoy myself with June's journey, customizing my very own luxurious island estate, letting my imagination run wild, decorating, collecting scraps of information to fill my photo album, learning more about each character, chat and play with or against other players by joining the detective club. This game has everything I love. I'm about to go on a trip next week, and I know I'll be playing June's Journey when I'm waiting for my flights. Can you crack the case? Download June's Journey for free today on iOS and Android. But you just said sketch, and wasn't what, wasn't that the name of one of the restaurants we went to? Yes, it is. And that's about, I think, what we're getting into now is everything. Oh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. But you, just because you said oh, it, no, I thought, oh, next, that's It is the next thing on my notes because we're pretty much done showing what we do in London before we go to Paris on this episode. So I think we should talk a little bit about everything we did that didn't get covered on the show. I mentioned earlier when we were on the bus tour that we went to the Globe Theater. That was one of the places I really wanted to go because I was a theater major in college. So I really wanted to see it because it's like a recreation of Shakespeare's theater. And they tried to build it in a really historically accurate way where like they don't use nails, they use wooden pegs and stuff like that. So that was really fun to see. Yeah, that was really cool. And then one of the things that you didn't see is after we did the London Dungeons tour, we went on the Jack the Ripper tour. And first, the story Start of the tour we went to the 10 bells because that's like the only thing that's still there that was actually there during the jack the ripper time period and we went into this it's like a um it's a bar and we go into the bar or wait wait do i have to say pub it's a pub yeah <laughs> <laughs> um we go into the pub and we got kicked out you guys <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. They didn't want us in there. <laughs> well, it was because we were filming, and I don't think they got permission. They yeah. just, like, tried to... Try to wing it. Yeah, wing it in there, and they were like, no way, you're out. So we got booted out of the 10 bells, and we wanted to have a drink in there and just, mm-hmm. like, say that we, like, did, but... Um, but then they gave us a tour and I thought the tour was very interesting and fascinating, but there was an element missing for me. What was that? The fog. Oh yeah. That would have been nice. We did it at nighttime. So that's eerie and stuff. And you're walking in the, you know, path and stuff. But you know, when you think of Jack the Ripper, or at least when I think of Jack the Ripper, I think of fog, thick, heavy fog, and there just was no fog. And I think that's a good thing. But it was sad for me on the tour. But I heard that the reason that London used to be so foggy and it's not so much anymore was the Industrial Revolution. And that was like a oh, pollution and like, oh, wow, you know, messing that's so, things up. That's so interesting to me is how like things we do on Earth affect the weather. Like I was reading this book about Laura Ingalls Wilder and the settlers and how on the plains there used to be no trees. But once people started planting trees, it like changed the weather. And that's so crazy to me. Like I get it in a way, but also I feel like the weather is this huge indomitable force that it just seems weird that anything we do as little ants on the world can affect the weather that I seems know. so strange to me yeah it is weird um another thing we went and did is hampton court and we did that on the day just before we went to uh the tower of london yes and that is henry the eighth's palace it's a little bit outside of london and it was just so cool i think one of my favorite parts was the kitchen because they have it set up like the kitchen used to be back in the day and they have this big cauldron with like fake bubbling noises and smells coming out of it oh my god you guys it smelled like fresh baked bread in there it was that tour was so cool and so interesting and I could just feel that it was haunted in Mm -hmm. there too and they do tell a few ghost stories like on our tour they did but they are not really into the fact that they're haunted and I know that I have tried and I know other people have tried to like do an investigation there and they've been very anti but there's some ghost stories and I remember one of them and I think they said and tell me if this sounds right timeline wise that um, they hear a woman screaming running down the hall and they I think they said it was uh, Jane Seymour that could be that's who they think it was Ooh. but there was other ghost stories too and it's really cool it's it's a if you are out there you should definitely put this on your tour list One of the things I was most excited to do there was they have a hedge maze in the back, like in The Shining. Yes. And when we did the hedge maze, we were told, okay, by our tour guide, we don't have a lot of time. We need to get going. They didn't want to let us do it at all. They were like, you know, you guys, we don't have time. And this, we were so excited about the hedge maze. We were like, no way. We have to. But the weird thing was, is we knew we were in a hurry. So we were running. And this hedge maze isn't necessarily like the easiest to figure out. Like it's easy to figure out if you're looking at it, obviously, as like a map from above, like a maze on a kid's, you know, child's menu thing at a restaurant. But like when you're in it, it's not so easy. But we intuitively knew our way through it and did not make one wrong turn. And I'm so weirded out by that. And we were talking about it earlier and I thought it was so weird. So I talked to my psychic about it and asked her if I'd ever been there before. And she said, yes, I used to live there. And court life at the palace was so busy that I would often go into the maze. And I knew it like the back of my hand. And I would go hide in certain like dead end corners of the maze just for like a moment of privacy. And that was so weird to me because it reminds me of like being at the mansion and how I would hide in that third story bathroom yeah, for privacy. I was thinking that too. Yeah. And I thought that's so crazy. I wonder if that's true. You should do a past life regression and see if you were there. I know. I need to do that. You know what? Honestly, I don't even know who to talk to for that. Use one of my people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it was crazy, you guys. So we went, you know, obviously we started at the start and for this maze you run through to and you try to get to the middle and then there's like an exit if you don't want to try and find your way back out so we went we were running through and we were literally like every time we would come to a section we'd be like right or left right or left and we just yell it out whatever we thought not one wrong move we got to the center immediately and then we just did the exit because we can't waste any more time in there but like it was so crazy But we did get recognized in the hedge maze. Some school children came up to us and asked if we were in the Justin Timberlake video. Because we were in a Justin Timberlake video years prior that was shot at the mansion. But because there was topless women in it, it wasn't allowed to be seen in the States. So it was only like Europe and stuff. But that was the only time we got recognized as us. Because the show wasn't playing in Europe really. Or it had, I think, in the UK for a little bit. But obviously people recognized Hef. So he was always mobbed. But... Yeah. Nobody really knew us. And then we went to Westminster Abbey. 
gorgeous. That was Beautiful. one of my favorite places. And I love seeing Queen Elizabeth's tomb. Queen Elizabeth the first. Yeah. I just remember thinking it was amazing. And it's crazy that people are buried in there or like entombed in there. Mm-hmm. I just felt like that that was very weird for me. But also very, you know, I love this stuff. So I was very intrigued by it. I thought the history there was fascinating seeing all that stuff in just real life the building itself yeah like unbelievable remember our tour guide told us that in world war ii like a bomb landed in the middle of westminster abbey but for some reason that bomb didn't go off and she was like thank god because if it blew up nobody would know how to build it now that's crazy yeah that's crazy isn't it weird that they knew how to do certain things back then that we don't know how to do now yeah yeah so strange have you seen um oh this is a tangent sorry you guys but there's this um i want to say it was on the unexplained with william shatner or maybe uh, it's on one of those show kevin does yeah ew (laughs) sorry ew no it's good the show's good (laughs) but i don't know if it was on that show or not it might have been on a different show but there's a staircase in this church God, I feel like it was like, oh man, I don't know half the story. I feel like it was in New Mexico or something like that. But there's this staircase built in this church and nobody can figure out how it was built. And there's no like, there's no nails. There's no, and it's a beautiful staircase and it kind of spirals around. And um, the nuns who run this church said that the the story behind it is that they couldn't get this staircase built and then this guy just showed up one day a carpenter and said he would build it but nobody could could come in it was jesus yeah nobody they think it was jesus yes that's what they think that's what they think that nobody was allowed that he had one stipulation he didn't want to be paid for it or anything but like well he didn't say he didn't want to be paid for it yet he just said nobody can come in while i'm doing this nobody can be in here and so Mm. he was in there for however long it took i forget how long and then finally they came in to check on him and the stairs were built beautifully and they wanted to pay him and he was nowhere to be found and no one knows how he did it or who he was. What in the actual fuck? I'll try and figure out what that story is and get you guys more details. Oh my God, that's crazy. Or link it if it's on YouTube or something. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it reminds me of that kind of. And then we went to um, the Tower of London which I wanted to go to so bad because, again, I'm morbid and I love this shit and I love the history of it. Do they have a pet raven at the Tower of London? Isn't there, like, don't they always have, like, a raven in residence? Where did I hear that? Wait, that does seem familiar, but why? I don't remember for sure. But I that need seems, a pet raven. That's a familiar story. Ravens are amazing. I just watched something the other night about ravens and how smart they are and how if you do something to them, like, one of them, like, say you, like, throw something at one, it's, like you don't want, like what it's doing or whatever they tell all of their friends and they will find you and they will attack you and it see, doesn't matter where you are in the city and they are so smart see that's why this is and i know spirit animal is not a term we should be using so can we think of something else but like that's my kindred wait animal. they they don't want you using spirit animal because yeah, it's like it's indigenous yeah okay so it's like not good but i'll so i'll say the, i didn't know that though yeah well i knew it was now indigenous but i didn't know they didn't but we weren't supposed to say it. yeah so i will say the animal i identify with yeah are like ravens and crows i love them so much i like them too and i'm not that big into birds really but i love those and i just think they're so cool and they're so much bigger than you think they're going to be yeah and i love that a whole flock of them is called a murder Mm -hmm. why why is it called that because they'll fuck you up i think so too it's crazy but um so at the tower of london we got the full tour we had one of those um beef eater guys that showed us all around i have a raven on my shirt today Oh, yeah, you do. And he gave us the whole tour and everything. We got to see the crown jewels, which was incredible. And then we were talking to some of the guards that wear the, like, big bearskin hats and stuff. And they took us up into, like, their, like, break room or dormitory or whatever it is. And before you guys think anything, like, scandalous or anything like that, no. We had PR with us. We had tour guides with us. We had can't. Well, the camera crews weren't allowed to do that, so not camera crews. We had um, security. We had photographer, all that kind of stuff. And we went up into their, like, dorm area or break room thing, and they let us try on their bearskin hats. Oh, Are they heavy? They're heavy. Oh, and wow. we have pictures of it. And we put, we put those, um, I'll put those on the Patreon, too. But, yeah, it was really fun. So we got really behind the scenes, and it was amazing. That's so cool. I saw a lady on TikTok who was making videos about, like, quote, unquote, living at the Tower of London. Because I guess you do stay there while you work there in some cases. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, man. I The ghost stories that they have. Ooh. Like, I would love to have somebody tell me all those stories on my podcast. Mm-hmm. 
if, if anybody's someone. listening I want to do a Tower of London yeah. <laughs> podcast. And then we mentioned Sketch Restaurant, but I think we should talk about what it looked like inside because it was so crazy. Yeah, you know, I don't remember what the actual restaurant looked like at the time. I know they remodeled it a couple times since. For a while, it was like very Instagram friendly, millennial pink. And then I think they've remodeled it once since then or are remodeling it. But one thing I really remember was upstairs, they had this really cool bathroom area with like stained glass ceilings or colored glass ceilings. And each bathroom stall was like this egg pod. Yeah, that's what I remember. I also remember people smoking in there because in California, you're not really like allowed to smoke in public. But back then in London, you were. So I just remember going to the restaurant and feeling choked out with smoke. It was such a difference. Yeah, for sure. And then, um, of course, we tried fish and chips while we were there. We actually went to a restaurant called Fish. Exclamation point. Fish. Yeah, Yeah, fish. I wonder if it's still there. (laughs) You might be wondering like why the London portion of this whole trip was so long and like Paris is like only a couple minutes because I was wondering it like I'm watching this and I'm like God I'm like 15 minutes in 17 minutes into this 22 minute episode and we're not even in Paris yet like what is going on but it's because it would have been more 50 50 except for they had to take out that scene and replace it with the clotted cream scene yes but don't worry even though it's a short part of the episode there was a ton of behind the scenes drama and things we didn't film so we have a lot to say about the Paris leg of the trip when we check back with you guys next week yeah so if you'd like more content check out our patreon at patreon.com slash girls next level and you can see a lot of the pictures from our trip and i'm gonna finish this scone and clotted cream so bye guys bye for more content check out our patreon at patreon.com slash girls next level